Harper's Fair. Why are we looking at a garbage bin? Well, it's actually a scrap metal bin. So what do we have? We have a whole bunch of parts in here that I pulled off of several motors. We have several different head gaskets. We have some nuts, bolts, things like that. What I actually want to talk about today is gaskets themselves. So we're going to pull a little bit of this stuff out of here. Don't need that at all. Time to cover for a board. You need one? I'm getting rid of it. Uh, actually, we can talk about that one. I'm going to go ahead and pull some gaskets out of here. What I really want to talk about, though, are different kinds of head gaskets and how things seal and why different styles are important. So we have MLS gaskets, like that exhaust gasket that I pulled up first. And of course we have the rubber ringed, I guess. I, I don't know how I want to call it. We have some aftermarket head gaskets, some factory head gaskets. We have an oil pan gasket here I want to talk a little bit about. And uh, I think that's pretty much it there. That'll be enough to cover for a little bit. So, this is a exhaust manifold gasket. Now, this is what's called a MLS gasket. It is just multiple layers of steel that are all just kind of squashed together. And there's different versions of these. Some of them have three like this does here. Actually, this, is this two or three? I don't know if this is the same gasket or part of one and part of the other. But either way, sometimes they have different layer counts. Sometimes it'll be a single multi-layer. I don't know why they call it an MLS still, but it's just a single layer steel gasket. And the only thing that gives them a sealing surface is the embossed or raised surface that is on here. Oh, I can't see that. There we go, you can see it here. So you see how you have that area that has a ring that is indented? That spot is stretched out metal right in that area. And because it's stretched out, it always applies pressure to both sides of the, the thing that you're bolting together. In this case, a manifold and a cylinder head. Now, we have that as well in head gaskets. And I have three different types of head gaskets here, but we're gonna talk about a fourth one in a little bit. So we have, oh, there we go. These two gaskets here, and they are very similar. They are the factory head gaskets for different GM trucks. This is for the LT-based engine 2014 plus models, and this one is for the old school stuff. It's actually from my personal vehicle, and you can tell by the grind if you did not see that video. I have a video of the oil pan off, adjust, uh, addressing the oil pressure, and then I also have a video of taking the engine apart after the oil pressure thing did not get resolved and seeing why, and it was just because of sludge. So if you want to see that video, see the condition of a 300,000 mile motor, I'll go ahead and throw that one in the corner as well. So, these are factory style. I'm going to throw that one over there because that was filthy, disgusting, and I don't like handling it. In fact, I'm going to wipe my hands off before I continue touching all these because my hand feels grimy and gross now. Okay. So this is a factory or OEM head gasket. Now, this is for performance purposes consider one of the better gaskets you can purchase. It holds the most power before going to an extreme degree, like another type of gasket I'll talk about in a minute. But this is an aftermarket performance head gasket, and to be honest, will not hold as much power as this will. Why is that? We have this guy here, which is an MLS gasket, just like that exhaust one, basically. Oh, come on, focus. There we go. You can see the, the raised section there. And this gasket, I believe this one blew out. Uh, it depends on which side this was on. One of them blew out, but it blew out in the firing ring. This is on a car that makes over a thousand horsepower at the rear tire. And it was blowing this gasket out. I do not believe it's going to blow this style of gasket out. This was a test we were trying. We were told that this gasket is going to hold up. It can't hold up. It just doesn't work. Um, so we're going to ditch this style and go to another style that has very low miles on it. But the factory gasket, unlike that one, if we look real closely here, you can see they really don't have that embossed or raised or flattened or whatever you want to call it metal there. But what they have instead is they have this little sealer ring around here. So why does this work better than the other one if the other one has metal that's pushing against constantly, but this one does not? 
Well, what's happening is this little sealer that's on here adds thickness to the gasket. Rather than embose the steel and spend extra money on stamping equipment, just cut it out and throw a little sealer on there with basically a printer that prints over top of it. I believe that's how they do it. But they apply a sealer at a very consistent thickness. And when the cylinder head comes down on it, this creates more clamping force right where the sealant is and it squishes tighter in that area. Now, the MLS one that I just showed you, that material or that, that sealer material is all the way throughout the whole thing. So it's using the same exact metal thickness throughout the entire thing. The only difference is they stretch some of the metal out in a couple of areas and allow it to push against it. But because it's all the same material and all the same uh, coating thickness, so everything's basically the same thickness, it can't hold the power quite as well as this. At least that's my theory. So we have one other head gasket that we can talk about here. And it is actually, part of it is in my toolbox. It is the style that we first tried, but it did not work. Not because the gasket was a failure, but because I failed to do my part in checking something I just did not anticipate. And what it is, is it's like a power ring gasket. Now, the company that makes this particular gasket offers this kind of a power ring. Now, this is for a head gasket as well. See if we can see it here. If I get, there we go. Kind of see that. You can see that surface has a little bit of a couple of ridges in there. And then, oops, this surface here is flat. So, what do we have? We have basically a head gasket as well that goes around these. These, so that you put the head gasket on the block, and then these guys here slip into where the fire ring is. So this is your fire ring. And the head gasket material is more of a, a squishy material, kind of like an old school exhaust gasket, and or a really old school head gasket, I guess where it's not an MLS anymore. It's not MLS in the rest of this gasket. It's just this thing is your fire ring seal. And then the other part is a thicker, kind of a gooey gasket. Whereas these are what seal the fire ring. Now these work great if it fits. In this particular circumstance that this was on, it fit the cylinder bore awesome. It was just barely smaller than the cylinder bore. What I did not realize when I put these things in and I did not check for, which I will be checking for from now on if I ever have to do one of these again, is the cylinder head itself. So if we bring the cylinder head over here and take a look at that, we're gonna go ahead and put this fire ring up against here and we'll put it on one end and we will show you what's happening on the other end here. So we have basically right against the edge of the combustion chamber there. If I go over here, you can see that it's, it's, I can lift it right there. It's going inside the combustion chamber on that side. So when I did this, of course I put the head gasket on the block, I put the cylinder heads on, and I was not prepared for the fact that these combustion chambers are wider bore than what this is. So that caused a little bit of a problem, obviously. And because of that, it only had those little rings that were on here. I think there's three of them. Yeah, three of them. Only one of them was actually touching around that area of the combustion chamber. Of course, this caused a leak. So the head gasket failed in this particular scenario. Now, had we had a bigger bore of these, it would have been fine. There's also one more style of head gasket that's not very well known. It's an SCE Titan um, gasket. It's like, it's a copper gasket, but it has a metal stainless ring in it and they actually work really well for some applications but i guess not all rumor has it they don't work well in the ls but i have not verified that under heavy power loads yet so take that with a grain of salt <clears throat> now let's move on to these rubber embossed gaskets or whatever you want to call them here so these guys here they have the aluminum on the outside this is the crush zone area so you you bring your your plates together against this and then you have the rubber section here. Now, these are reusable if they're in good shape. So what you have, this rubber here is supposed to be raised. We'll give, we'll give you a look at this crappy one first. 
can see that that thing is flush with it. So this gasket is shot and in fact it leaked. But if you look at this gasket here, see how the rubber is going above it's, it's actually raised above that, or silicone in this case. Some They're actually silicone, but uh, this is an oil pan gasket. You can see that that silicone is higher than the aluminum. So as long as this silicone is higher than the aluminum like that, you can reuse these gaskets. I don't know if I have an intake gasket. Nope, I've got an intake gasket in there. I'm hoping to show you one of those. So you can reuse intake gaskets, you can reuse these gaskets, anything that's kind of a rubber style or a silicone style gasket, especially if it's got a metal squish plate like this, as long as it's raised and looks like it's in good shape, you can reuse it. And of course, gasket preparation is critical, absolutely critical. As you could imagine, with the MLS head gaskets, these styles right, right here, you're gonna want both machine surfaces to be as flat as possible. So it's highly recommended that anytime you pull a cylinder head off, you have the heads decked to smooth out that surface and make sure it's good. Because right around the bolt holes, you're gonna have manipulated metal because it's tighter there than the rest of it. This is all pushing up, the bolts are pulling down, it's gonna squish everything and distort it. So make sure you get the heads milled. And of course, I always recommend a valve job if you have the cylinder heads off anyway, especially on these GM vehicles. So, with all that in mind, I also have a Rumble account. It is official. But Rumble's search algorithm at this point in time is not good at all. You have to type in Crazed Performance Repair. And, of course, I will throw the link for Rumble if you're not signed up yet. Basically, it gives me a reference that you signed up because of me down in the description below. And if you want to follow me in there, be looking for an alternative to YouTube, Go ahead and hop on Rumble. That's a good alternative to YouTube. All my videos are synced, so they all end up over there as well. As my library, too. I have a LBRY account. I call it library, but it's LBRY. And uh, that one, I, I'm also synced on as well. So all my YouTube videos are synced everywhere else. And then I have a separate video streaming section or, or channel area on my actual website itself. And, of course, that comes with its benefits as well. So with that, like, share, subscribe. Hopefully this gasket video is helpful for you. We will be getting a update on my truck soon. I'll give you a little hint. I did buy some parts. I spent a lot of money, but I did it on a budget. I did it as cheap as possible. One of the parts is back ordered, and only time will tell if I'm actually gonna put the full stroke kit in it or not, because if I can't get the part, it happens to be the crank, I'm not going to be able to do the stroker kit if I can't get it in time because I need to be able to haul a car somewhere. So I need this thing running. I got to do what I got to do. I guess the deciding factor is whether I get the parts or not. Like, share, subscribe. And as always, hope to see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. I'm getting back to work like I'm supposed to be.